Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Where my inbox has been full of people worrying about E10 fuel, which has been introduced into the UK in the last couple of days. What people don't realise is that we've had E5 petrol for a long time. It sort of just sort of bypasses. And E5, of course, is 5% ethanol and E10 is 10% ethanol. So there's hundreds of questions about having ethanol in your fuel tank. Um, first of all, let me reassure you that all the old big BMWs are fine, fine with E10. It's when you get up to E85 that things get rather serious, but E10 is fine. And if you want to use E5, uh, that's 5% ethanol, as I've been doing for years, then just use the V Power, Shell V Power, and that's E5 rather than E10. And I've always used V Power anyway because of the high octane rating. So, yeah, if you want to keep with E5, then use Shell V Power and you'll be at E5 rather than E10. Now, there's been lots of questions about what ethanol does in our engines. Well, ethanol can be used as a fuel on its own. In fact, it is, well, plus 5% water. So 95% ethanol, 5% water. In Brazil, of all places, that's because they've got a lot of sugar cane and it's easy to turn that into ethanol. So those cars have to be converted to use E95 and uh, quite a few changes to the engine to allow that to happen. Now, ethanol resists knocking like the high octane fuel. So you think, oh, well, that's good news. Uh, I can, you know, with our knock sensors in our V8 engines, the uh, timing will advance and get more power out of the fuel. But unfortunately, that's not the case uh, because well, for instance, Shell has blended the fuel in their E10 just to be 95 octane. So they've used a lower octane fuel, mixed it with what is essentially higher octane ethanol to produce a fuel that's still 95 octane. So you're not going to get any big advance in timing and power. The other thing worth considering is ethanol doesn't have the same energy density as gasoline or petrol. I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but um, as far as I remember, ethanol compared to uh, gasoline or petrol has 30% less energy density. So cars that run 95%, E95 in their engines, realize less power from their engines but as far as we're concerned we're only talking about five or ten percent ethanol and the power reduction is insignificant um, you won't notice it now with e10 of course that's 95 octane um, and it's classed as a regular fuel well you're not going to get as much power as you do from the Shell V power because Shell V power is a higher octane fuel and we can run more advanced um, timing maps to get the power from it. E10 is always going to be 95 octane so you're not going to get as much power as you can from an E5 fuel like V power which is of course 99 octane. Okay so the next things that worry people are corrosion and you'll see I mean, if you look it up on the on the web about running ethanol as a fuel then you'll find a lot of people saying well a lot of companies say it's going to damage your engine it's going to kill your fuel pump and all the rest of it well that is true if you're if you're running 95 percent ethanol but properly distilled and mixed fuels, I like shell fuels, they have agents in them that's going to stop any damage to the fuel pump and so on. The big difference occurs with cars which have carburettors. Um, 
and the problem there is ethanol is hygroscopic which means it absorbs water and especially for classic cars which don't have sealed tanks and sit for nine months out of 12 in the garage it will, the petrol will absorb water and when that water gets into the carburetor it will cause corrosion and that's the problem with cars, carburetors and ethanol. Now, the information we've been given from the fuel companies such as Shell um, was that all cars made out of, made after 2011 are okay to run ethanol, but of course my cars aren't. <laughs> Three cars, a 1999 E31 V8, 2007 650 and a 2010 Mini, none of which are built after 2011. But all BMWs foresaw these things and uh, their engines were always designed to run ethanol if required. Now, one of the big differences between straight gasoline and ethanol, well, let's compare ethanol and gasoline as two separate entities. Ethanol itself needs very little in energy to change into a gas. So there's a conversion from a liquid to a gas and that takes very little energy. In a gasoline car, it takes a lot more energy to convert the liquid petrol into a gas which is used for combustion. Okay, so what's this got to do with anything? Well, what, the reason I'm telling you this is that that energy is taken away as heat from the engine. And that means that the cylinder head temperature is lower, but much more importantly than that is the valve temperature is lower. And that's the problem with um, earlier cars is that running ethanol increases the head temperature and increases the valve temperature. Unfortunately, that can cause them to seize and you get excessive wear and so on. So that's why some cars can't run ethanol is because their valves are going to start to melt and be damaged. But again we're still talking 5 or 10 percent ethanol and it really makes very little difference. The big difference is when you go to E95 or E85 where the greater percentage of the fuel is actually ethanol and not gasoline. Now, we're, as far as we're concerned with E5 or E10, it's nothing to worry about. There is a very, very slight rise in cylinder head temperature and valve temperature, but the valves are designed um, to be able to withstand those increased temperatures, and it's only a few degrees, and it's akin more to just sticking your foot down and really running the car at full power. Those sort of temperatures are well in excess of cruising around with E10 in the tank. So no damage occurs to the valves. The valves were designed to dissipate, well, to move the heat away from the hot areas, um, sodium filled in some cases. And so, as far as we're concerned, we can go up to some E20 or E30 and no damage is going to occur to the valves or the cylinders. So that's nothing to worry about. So, okay, so the bottom line on this to start with, before we go through any other interesting bits and bobs, E10 is fine for all BMW cars, even the ancient things, E31, E32, E34, E36, E38, E39 and we're still talking about it because it's 2007 this model is for the 6 series so bottom line is don't worry E10 is fine but I'd never use E10 anyway I always use E5 um, Shell V-Power or Shell Nitro um, in some countries and that's to attain the most power I can out of the fuel now, of course, um, if you do use regular fuels and you're quite used to using them, then you're going to see a slight loss in performance, but so small, I don't think you're going to notice it. Of course, with the same octane, um, the timing is going to be advanced to exactly the same place as it is with, well, E0 gasoline. 
um, because it's the octane of the fuel, the anti-knock index, which sets the advancement of the timing. So you will see a very slight reduction in performance, but nothing you're gonna notice. And I mean, if you're using 95 octane fuel, you're not really using your car to its full potential anyway. And when you move over to uh, V power, Shell V power or Shell Nitro, you're back to E5 and you've got your power back anyway. So you've always got the option of going to an E5 against an E10. Really this affects more the sort of middle of the road cars rather than performance cars, which of course BMW has always been designed as a performance car and so it's able to use much higher percentages of ethanol without causing any problems. But on the other side of the coin, a performance car needs performance fuels and for that you need uh, less ethanol um, to achieve the greatest power because gasoline has a higher energy density. So yeah, it's very difficult to also understand why some for instance drag cars they use ethanol or methanol one of the two of them and of course they get huge amounts of power from the engine but this is because they use much higher compression ratios now ethanol is great at uh, resisting knocking um, so you can run a much higher compression ratio on an ethanol engine than you can on a straightforward gasoline engine which is why they use it and they attain huge amount of powers from their ethanol engines um, by increasing the compression ratio to such a point that you're squeezing the most out energy out of the ethanol. But these domestic cars, even performance cars like this, nah, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. If you put ethanol into these cars in any large percentage, then you get a power decrease. So we've got a fixed compression ratio. We've got a fixed compression ratio of 10 to 10.5 to 1 in the 650, and I think it's 10 or 10.5 M60, M62 V8 engines. Of course, when you get on to the older engines, M10, M30, M70 V12, then they've got very low compression ratios of some, something like 7.5 to 1. And running ethanol means you just lose power. The more percentage of ethanol you put in it, the more power you, lo you lose. So that's really it for this. this. I mean, it's taken me long enough to drive back from work. I'll stick a few bits and bobs on the inserts and that's about it really. So yeah, bottom line, E10, don't worry about it. It's not gonna cause your car any damage. If possible, use the um, Shell V power, which is E5, to get the most power from your engine. But it's been E5 for a long time and no one's really noticed. Um, it's just a shame that um, there are some fuels which don't have any ethanol in at all, but I don't think they're available in the UK. It's the much higher octane fuels, of course, uh, that you get most performance out of your car. But for a day-to-day -day driver, E5, Shell V Power, and I think BP and all the other uh, fuels, dual, fuel stations do the same sort of deal where it's still E5 in performance fuels, the higher octane ones. Okay, well, I hope you managed to stay with me through that. Um, it's quite complicated, isn't it? Yeah, the use of ethanol as a fuel is, yeah, very interesting. It's very interesting that drag cars use uh, ethanol as a fuel and get a lot of power from it but that's all down to the anti-knock index of ethanol which is extremely high and extremely high compression ratios we've got a fixed compression ratio so we can't utilize the additional anti-knock index of ethanol and in any case the fuels are mixed in such a way that the the anti-knock index is the same uh, whether it's got if ethanol in it or not, they retain the same uh, anti-knock index and octane racing. Nine, 99 for Shell V Power, 95 for regular. Oh, that's about it, I think. I think I've warbled on enough. Don't worry about it. E10's fine, but I always use E5. Need the power out of these cars, you know. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. 
and I'll see you next time. Oh, stick a thumbs up if you like the video.